I had the opportunity to visit several golf courses around Cairo, Egypt recently. The golf courses are either Bermuda grass, normally Tiff Way or 419 on fairways and roughs, and Tiff Dwarf on greens. Seashore Pass Palum is the other grass species I found on the other golf courses. Almost all the golf courses built after 2000 are Seashore Pass Palum, which I will discuss in this presentation. The two Seashore Pass Palum courses I'm going to mention are Katmia Dunes Golf Club, shown here, and the Algeria Golf Club, shown here. The Algeria was designed by Greg Norman, and the superintendent is Will Evans, who is a former student at The Ohio State University who went through the International Intern Program. From tea to green, the variety of seashore pass palum is platinum at the Algeria Golf Club. The fairways are mowed five times a week at a height of approximately 12 to 13 millimeters. The water for irrigation is effluent. Tees are maintained at 6 to 8 millimeters. Depending on the time of the year, the greens at Algeria Golf Club are mowed from 2.5 to 3.2 millimeters. In the case of the Algeria Golf Club, the greens are overseeded with Poet Trivialis, which is not a common practice in this region. The greens are overseeded around November 1. Close up of the green shows the high shoot density of the overseeded turf. A major winter weed is Poe annua, shown here in the collar and along the slope. One of the difficulties with seashore paspalum is its sensitivity to herbicides, and in Egypt, there are few labeled turf products. Seashore paspalum is susceptible to scalping, which can be enhanced with moisture stress. Controlling organic matter is an important aspect of seashore paspalum management. Organic matter can result in uneven turf contributing to scalp. Moisture stress can compound this effect. Katamia Dunes Golf Club was designed by Brian Curley, and the superintendent is Mohammed Omar. The irrigation water source is effluent, but is considered secondary treated. The effluent water is treated again, in this case, prior to entering the golf course. From tea to green, the variety of seashore paspalum used is supreme. The mowing heights are similar to those previously mentioned. The greens are frequently top dressed approximately every 10 days. Here is a close up of the seashore paspalum putting green at Katamia Golf Club. In this case, these greens have not been overseeded. Over 10 hectares of ice plants were established on this golf course. These plants require a little maintenance. Weeds are a problem. Besides Poe annua, other weeds include the annual grassy types like crabgrass and an assortment of broadleaf weeds occur. Spurge is a summer weed that in this region appears to be a common problem and difficult to control. In this photograph, a colleague is posing to show weeds how often they are removed by hand. You can see what looks like bird pecking is actually weeds that have been removed by hand. Again, you can see how seashore paspalum is susceptible to moisture stress and mowing that can result in scalping, which has occurred on this tee. If you look in the roughs, you can see numerous palm trees. Actually, this course has over 6,000 palm trees. The annual maintenance for these palms is around $30,000. One of the things that I noticed with some of the golf courses that I have visited that were associated with housing development, that many of these houses were not complete. It seems to be common that a skeleton of a home is constructed, then whoever purchased a skeleton pays to finish the home. This concludes a quick overview of a couple of seashore paspalum golf courses in Cairo, Egypt. As a side note, you may be wondering what I was doing in that part of the world. I was taking part in a day-long seminar on turf grass management held at Katamia Heights Golf Club in Cairo to golf course superintendents and club managers. 
This is a view of the seminar room prior to the beginning of the seminar. How much of the Egyptian landmarks did I see? Not much, unless you count drive-bys. If you look closely, and I circled if you can see one of the pyramids. Here is another early morning drive-by of the pyramids. The lighted or constructed area is the site of the new Pyramid Museum. Here is a view of the Nile River. What I did experience was a lot of traffic in Cairo. Not only is it heavy, but it seems everyone drives wherever they want. And with whatever they want. And crowd as many as they can into one vehicle. If you look closely in this photograph, you can see three people on a motorcycle. But even with the traffic and a relatively short visit, I found Cairo to be a fascinating place that I would be happy to return to. This picture is a view from my hotel room.